Ah, thank goodness winter's almost over. That means it's time to prune our hydrangeas. Hydrangeas paniculata to be exact. I wanted to do a quick video showing you guys how to prune these correctly so that you can get the most flowers and the best performing hydrangea, panicle hydrangea shrubs this coming season. Okay, so if you're confused as to which hydrangea you have, I'll do a little overlay to show you guys which one I'm actually talking about. And also, I'll show you which one we are not talking about, the other Macrophylla uh, big leaf hydrangea. Okay, so what we have here with me is the berry white hydrangea. I know, great name, um, from first editions. Look how huge these flower heads have gotten. We know that this shrub is going to produce large flowers, that means pruning this plant can be very helpful to ensure that the stems stay nice and strong. And that's one of the principal reasons why we like to prune our panicle hydrangeas back at the end of winter or in the beginning of spring. Really and truly, you can prune panicle hydrangeas all year round because they produce flowers on their new growth. So you never have to worry about accidentally cutting away the old flowers. I particularly like to do it at the end of winter, just before new growth starts to occur. So if you prune in the fall and you have this open wound, what can happen is that if water sits on top and then freezes, it can cause damage to your stem, causing you to lose more of your shrub than you actually would like to. Really and truly, I think the best time to prune our panicle hydrangeas is after the threat of frost has ended. So for us, um, we're in the end of February, early March, and I hope that the end of frost has ended. So as we start to think about where we're actually going to take our cuts, you can see the difference between this woody stem, this woody growth, and then some of the newer growth. What we're gonna do, we're gonna think about cutting back to this woody framework, all right? That's gonna leave a shrub that's about two foot tall. You could even cut it back even harder and that would be absolutely okay. But I'm gonna cut it back just to that woody growth. During this process, we're also going to cut away branches that may have been crossing, anything that looks a little bit diseased or damaged or dead wood as well. Some of the other reasons why we like to prune our panicle hydrangeas each spring is that cutting them back heavily will actually cause them to have increased regeneration and that's gonna create more flowers. If we didn't cut it back, that would also be okay, but the plant is gonna get much taller and produce fewer flowers just at that top. And if they're very, very long stems, they can start to flop. So by cutting it back, we're actually gonna keep a nice, more compact shrub and it's going to flower more heavily because of that as well, okay? So now that we know some of the reasons why we like to prune, let's go ahead and go for it. All right, so we're gonna start by cutting off last year's growth and returning to that woody framework. You can try to do it at an angle. That's gonna help keep a nice clean cut, just like this. Now you can see this little section right here, this would be old dead wood. This is not ever gonna create new growth, so we can go ahead and cut that back as well. Okay, so we wanna go ahead and remove all the dead wood. Oftentimes the dead wood, you can just kind of pluck it off with your fingers, no problem. But you see how this branch right here is starting to cross over this other branch. We wanna eliminate any crossing branches just because that keeps a nice, uh, healthy, and clean appearance. All right, so you can just go ahead and cut that right off. And right here as well, this is you see how these branches are actually rubbing together? It would probably be fine, but for the health of the plant, we can go ahead and remove this one right there. You can see it was, it was starting to rub into, into the bark here, which over time will be a bad thing. All right, so we'll go ahead and remove that now. And also, don't forget, keep these. These are beautiful. These dried flower heads make an awesome vase. They last forever. So we can go ahead and start by removing all of our last year's flowers. And you can see where I'm cutting them. I'm cutting at the base of that new growth just above that woody framework. And you can see that I'm cutting right above those knobby sections. Those knobby sections are called the nodes 
oftentimes referred to as the buds because that is where the buds will actually emanate from once it starts to grow again. Any sort of growth that's just kind of out to the wrong direction, you can also remove that as well. So the next step is to remove any of the weak or thin stems. These stems really cannot support the full weight of these large panicle flowers. So we want to remove them. That's going to really help to centralize the efforts of the plant to the stronger branches. That's going to create a much fuller and healthier plant this coming summer. So I know that it looks like I'm cutting a lot off of this plant and it's true I am definitely cutting this back quite hard but that's okay because this is a super vigorous shrub and it'll easily grow from this two foot framework into a six or eight foot tall plant by the end of summer. Okay so if you notice I was trying to cut at an angle that way if rain falls it will slide off the angled wood rather than if I cut straight across the water could sit and stay and possibly rot out the top. So we want to try to cut at an angle to eliminate the potential for diseases or ma or mas enfermedades or <laughs> more infirmities. Um, but so I just cut this back pretty hard. It looks like a nice good framework, nice and sturdy. Looks like I cut a lot, which I did but this is going to explode in growth over the coming weeks. All right, so if you have any further questions about how to prune your panicle hydrangeas, make sure to leave a comment below. Um, I love, or if you prune your hydrangeas a little bit differently, I love to hear all of your experiences. You guys bring so much knowledge to me as well, and I love reading everything you guys write. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you do a little like, Click that bell to receive notifications for my weekly video updates. Every Sunday, I do a longer video like this one and then some shorter ones throughout the week. And don't forget, subscribe if you like the content. It's all about plants all the time. Anyway, thanks for joining me here on Plant Vibrations. I'll catch you soon. Ciao.